Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay. So uh, you can the tell my pitch. Setting? Yeah, you can you can so you can Wait, tell. Really, it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it <laughs> it does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's God. it's bringing the decibels down. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about DeSantis versus Reedy Creek again because there have been some developments. There's going to be a meeting tomorrow. It's Wednesday. That's when they usually do their meetings uh, to discuss voiding that agreement. Right. Why it should be null and void. Why it should be nullified. And for those of you who don't know, Disney, basically their lawyers, uh, kind of shadow wrote the agreement. They didn't shadow wrote, they wrote it and then put somebody else's name on it. Put somebody else's name on it. So, well, yeah, it's kind of a conflict of interest. You know, you should put your own name on it. Yeah, from our understanding, it's you can't, a company can't enter contract with itself. And it was supposed to be Disney, Walt Disney World as one entity. Reedy Creek was right. a, a, an independent governing you know, branch, but everybody kind of knew Disney ran it. And they, they basically just, you know, Proved it with emails and Disney kind of added themselves and comments that were made previously. So everybody knew. I mean, everybody knew that Disney was and Reedy Creek were pretty much interchangeable. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, oh God, this really dates me. But um, do you remember Green Acres by any yes. chance? Sam Drucker, where he's Don't like, remember well, the character. I okay, he's like, well, he had like 19 different hats he wore. He basically did like everything in the town. He was like the the uh, the postmaster and he was the guy that ran the drugstore and he was whatever. It's like, okay, now you're talking to the postmaster. Now you're yeah. Talking. That's basically it. Mickey's putting his mustache on. Be like, okay, I'm Reedy Creek now, guys. Honest. That's what we are. Um, so yeah, let's talk about this and talk about the loopholes they think they have to, to sort of right. do it. Long, it's a long agenda, so. All right. Before we get to any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. If you subscribe, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo. A woohoo. Um, so you put this up on Pirates and Princesses. Uh... Yeah, so basically what's going on is they have this agenda and, and what the agenda item 8.1 is what the focus is on, on this. And they're looking to find, you know, the reasoning to find to nullify the agreement that Disney made with Reedy Creek. They have a whole big, I, there's a whole big uh, document, which we're going to look at in a minute. But basically they said the 8.1 is for the approval of legislation, slate of findings regarding and declare the February 8th, 2023 Development Agreement and Declaration of Restrictive Covenants entered into by the Reedy Creek Imp Improvement District and Walt Disney Parks and Resorts U.S. See how there's two separate entities? Yes, supposed um, to be, supposed to be. Void and unenforceable. Um, they're asking for direction to litigation to see what needs to be done to have it terminated or stricken from public record of Orange and Osceola counties. So looking to see what they can do. Now here, there's a couple issues here with, with this. Um, one is the fact that we've mentioned that Disney is supposed to be a separate entity from Reedy Creek. Uh, that was how it was supposed to be set up. But they basically wrote their own damn contract, which we did a video for, yeah. and put the other guy's name on it. And and then said, oh, oh, we're separate entities, but you wrote your own contract that you signed. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's a problem. But they said that um, another issue they're having, people are like, well, they did have their meetings. They did, you know, about the, the two meetings they required. They did put it in uh, the Orlando Sentinel that they required. Yes. But they also had to send out mail notices of intent to all affected property owners before the public first public hearing. The issue is the, the some of the places that would have been affected were uh, the city of Bay Lake and the city of Buen Lake Buena Vista. Okay, mm -hmm. and you're like, but those are Disney. Yeah, but Disney set up in the past that they're separate entities, so um, they're part of the district. Like Disney's part of the district, and they're part of the district, but they're they're all like client, like, like you know, the people that should have been notified separately. Right, right. So. They never had their two meetings. They never, those city areas never agreed to a document, never signed the document. Hmm. So you can't say the whole district agreed when the whole district didn't agree. Yeah. I, 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 from my way, I understand it. Yeah. So um, if you go out to the document, we can, it'll make more sense when you see the document. Now, I'm not a lawyer. What? I'm not going to claim I understand all this. This is how it reads to me. And this is the first time Neon's looking at it. See how it reads to him. But um, this is the document here. They're talking about the different, the different issues. And the development agreement affects property owners um, in the following ways. This is the agreement that, that, that no one's going to agree to this, okay? 
Under the terms of the development agreement, Disney agrees uh, that on a prospective basis, the development in the district must be allowed to the maximum levels authorized under the comprehensive plan. Um, and they're basically what it is, is the development agreement gives all development rights to Disney for the whole district, including those cities that, you know, are separate, which, you know, basically means that they can control and develop all the right, anything there. They have to get their approval, written approval on proposed developments. And then Disney has to decide whether or not they're going to agree to it. Oh, okay. So nobody can develop anything unless Disney agrees to it. And you have to have Disney's yep. written consent. Disney in an agreement with Reedy Creek that Disney drafted. <laughs> I wonder why this could be like considered a conflict of interest. Um, under the terms of the development agreement, the height of any building constructed by any property owner within the district is controlled by and approved by Disney. Because they don't want they don't want uh, buildings like skyscrapers polluting their skyline for their parks. They polluted it enough with the stupid skyliner. It looks yeah. like shit. Yeah, it does. It looks. It trashy. looks tacky. I mean, they the sky, I get why they put it in, but and it's kind of fun to ride, but it's tacky looking. Under the terms of the development agreement, the district must fund, design, and construct, or cause to be constructed, certain infrastructure projects, including a number of road projects. As set forth in the development agreement, these road projects must be funded by general obligation bonds financed with taxes levied against the district using a combination of funds on hand and new bond funds. In other words, the development agreement requires that Disney to levy and collect property tax revenue from all taxpayers in the district to finance new bonds for these road projects. So basically, the, 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 the Disney, you can't build unless they authorize. You can only build what they speculation the stipulations they say you can build to. And but you can totally go and do roads and stuff like that and pay for that. Um, but you have and, and Disney's gonna be helpful because they're gonna sell you the land um to do these roads to make oh, the, the make okay. the, dis the district pay for them at, at no more than market value. Okay. How how kind of them? Right. But but you have to but you have to you must fund, design, and construct these projects, basically when Disney says you have to. Okay. Okay. So um, they're talking about the two here, the two meetings they had and all that. But one thing they said that's interesting was they did, they did advertise it in Orlando Sentinel, but this was interesting. Prior to those meetings, both the January 25th and February 8th board meetings, the district did not put its agenda up on the website. That's what mm -hmm. this is. It came from the website, okay. the agenda. They did not put their agenda on the meetings on the websites. They didn't put the agendas in those articles either. The district did not upload agenda packages to the, web, to the website until March after the board of supervisors was appointed to the governor's office. So those two meetings that were the ones in question, they gave six minutes to discussion in one meeting, one or two minutes to the second meeting. They never uh, put the agendas up on the website ahead of time. They put it up after, after all this was done in March when Disney or when DeSantis then found out about it. Yeah, they uh, put it up then. Uh huh. Yeah. That that that's that's totally on the up and up, right? Yeah, so these are the reasons they're giving um to, to avoid it. Then they come down here, okay. So under the new agreement, any local government laws, policies governing development that were in effect on February eighth, um, shall govern under the development agreement for duration of the agreement. Okay. Two municipalities within the boundaries of the district. Bay Lake, the city of Bay Lake and the city of Lake Buena Vista. Okay. So prior to February 27, 2023, those were the two municipalities within the, within the district, okay? And they said at the time the development agreement was approved by the district and executed, they had uh, exclusive authority over the planning and development regulations and stuff of their areas, mm -hmm. okay? And now they said at the time the development agreement was executed, the district has no authority or jurisdiction to approve or regulate development-related activities on property located in these municipalities. Um, so what's going on is they didn't they would they weren't included in that like Disney signed it like we own all of that right but they're separate entities like the district the Reedy Creek Improvement District was a separate entity yeah and Disney well Disney World is a separate entity so they would have had to have agreements uh, from my understanding and they didn't have agreements so under the development agreement the district assigns Disney all the development rights within the district uh, even if they're held by Bay Lake or Buena Vista which they didn't go through the steps at Bay Lake and Lake Buena Vista to give Disney the rights to do that. Ah. So you okay. see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, my that's what it seems like. Okay. So 
again, if we're interpreting this correctly, because we're going to have armchair. Yes, lawyers. and I'm not a lawyer. This is yeah. how it seems. Well, I went to Legal Joe's channel, and I he said. I don't really fucking care what Legal Joe says. <laughs> I mean, I do care. I do. That's what he's I do care what legal Joe says because he knows what he's talking about. I'm just saying, from our looking at this without the legal background, this is how it comes. This across. is how it comes across. So basically, they're going to do to Disney what Disney did to them and, and find a little tiny loophole. Seems that to way. Push their way through. It seems that way. So they go on about they go on about that for quite a while. Here they talk about this here. Then this is where they kind of sum it up. They said the benefits of the agreement are one sided. The development agreement entitles Disney to the exclusive use of future development rights in the district, delegates district zoning powers to Disney, allows Disney to obligate the district to construct private facilities in aid of Disney's developed projects, meaning we can make the district pay for our damn roads and infrastructure right. um, for our projects. But they can't do it unless we tell them they can't. But when we tell them they can't, they have to they have to jump and they have to pay what we say. <laughs> okay, nobody in the right mind would fucking agree to this. Oh. Then they said the district. Apparently they did. Yeah, I know. The district receives nothing in return. They said the only theoretical benefit the district gets is that Disney oblig if the Disney obligates the district to construct public facilities that require land that Disney owns, they will not request payment for the land in excess of film fair market value. So they're not going to say, well, okay, that that acre of land is going to cost you a billion dollars now because. But yeah, but did yeah. you catch the first part? Uh. When Disney obligates the district to construct public facilities that require land that Disney owns, yes. they'll sell it to them for fair market value. So we, you need to buy this thing that we could Because to we do, told you to. Because we told you to, and we're going to charge you a billion dollars for it. So, and, you, and then you pay for it. Have a magical day. Yeah. We can't, yeah, we can't, we yeah. can't charge you more than market value. Oh my God. But we're going to make you pay for it so that you can do the development projects that we're demanding you do. <laughs> oh, Disney. Because they talk about down here about how the development lasts or the agreement lasts for 30 years with the King Charles clause or whatever. Yeah. So they're basically like, this is why we need this things nullified. It's ridiculous. It restricts, it restricts everybody except for Disney. They, Disney could demand that the, that the new uh, board have to build, you know, roads and stuff, but they didn't take into consideration that they went to all this trouble to, to keep the city of Bay Lake and the city of um, Lake Buena Vista as, like, as separate entities they owned. But then they didn't go through the steps with them. Mm -hmm. They just like, well, we own those because we're Disney. But I thought Disney was and, and Reedy Creek were separate. Yeah, right. So wasn't Disney in the city of Lake Buena Vista and Disney in the city of, you know, um, Bay Lake? Aren't they aren't they separate entities? I mean, you spent you, they document in this article how they, they went and. And make sure they were. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. God, I, I, I can't wrap my head around how. I mean, the, the arrogance. No, that's basically it. Yeah. Disney's like, well, you know, this is this is how it's always been. This is how it's always going to be. You know, if you want to pay for our shit now, you're going to do it on what we say because we own Florida. Yeah, we are, we, Florida. Oh, we are Florida. So Florida. The, the, we don't care if the board gets put in. We're going to pass. Up, we're going to write our own covenants. Pass, put the, the lawyer for Reedy Creek's name on it. Pass the covenants with the, you wrote the agenda too, so that people knew what to, to vote on. Uh, pass the covenants, which is Disney's own contract with itself, which you're not allowed to do. And in the contract, Disney controls everything and the district gets the, the, the right of paying for stuff Disney tells them they have to pay for. Yeah, pretty much. That's 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 not a very good deal. It's not a very good deal for Florida. Now, I look, to be fair, again, not being a lawyer, I have no idea how this is going to ultimately play out. I really don't. Um, you know, I can I can see that Florida definitely definitely I think has a case against Disney and in, in this situation there. Um, and this doesn't have anything to do with the don't say gay bill or whatever. It's just like I mean, Disney was doing some underhanded stuff mm -hmm. trying to make sure that they got to keep their power. But then the flip side is. It did seem like Florida was asleep at the wheel. Like they should have been like, hey, yeah, did you send your notice it. out? Did we read this thing? Do we? And they didn't do it. Well, they were watching the website. They never got it never got posted until right, well, right. well after, which I mean, it's pretty obvious that Disney was deliberately trying to be underhanded in this. At least that's how it comes across yeah, yeah. to people look, outside looking in. Um, it, 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 it's. There's a lot of questionable things here. For Disney to have this loophole that they did this, ha, 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 we win, I see a lot of things that I would think that they could argue and win for the state of Florida because Disney just basically wrote their own contract for themselves for you know saying that they're separate entities when they clearly are not. Yeah. And you can't co – companies aren't allowed to write their own contract. You can't contract with yourself, apparently. Yeah. So 
that Self, they got self dealing, I guess. Is what yeah, and that's what it was. I mean, there's no question that's what it was. So that's one half of this part. The other part is DeSantis is going to try to point uh, F dot to inspect mm. the monorail system. Um, this is coming from our writer Mike. Uh, Mike Phelan says that uh, Disney's ability to self government be trimmed back more. Mickey will have self inspecting will have his self inspecting privileges neutered. You know, here's my. <laughs> They keep saying neutered, but that's very, that's very, that's very sexist of you. Why is it always neutered? I mean, you should rip that bitch Minnie's ovaries right out. I mean, I'm just saying. I thought, I thought, <laughs> it's, rip that her uterus. Sexist. I thought you were. I thought you know, Ricky, all the media keeps using it, and I'm just like, it's kind of sexist. Anyway, um, I get what they're saying. I'm just, I'm just I better clarify. I'm kidding because some dipshit in the comments would be like, oh my god. I'm like, no, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, you must be new. We yeah. talk like this all the time. We've been doing it for like five years. So the Orlando Sentinel said that they have learned from the Florida Department of Transportation, the FDOT, could take over safety inspection duties regarding Disney's popular transit system. So the rumor was true. Amendment for a state bill, Senate bill, sorry, Senate bill 1250 would ask FDOT, with overseeing safety standards for transit systems such as the monorail that are located within an independent special district created by a local act which have boundaries in two contin- contiguous counties. Uh, whatever. Basically, they're going to put it through that they have to have uh, F dot, you know, inspect the monorails. Honestly, I don't see how it's a bad thing. I, I think that, you know, I know that Disney does have their internal inspectors. And so far, you know, they've done fine. But the monorail is a piece of shit. Yeah, I think I think beyond just, you know, inspecting it for safety, they need to recommend it be replaced, which they might do. They might be like, hey, because I heard that the... Um, the lifespan for um, Bombardier, their Bombardier uh, mm-hmm. monorails, that particular model went on decades. Well, here's like, my next question. If they would have to replace the monorail system, would it be this, the new district that would be responsible for that? Because that's a public transportation that, It system. might be. But then at that point, they might be able to regulate it more. Oh, my God. The next thing will be like, oh, yeah, you got to pay a, pay a, a tax to – Get on the monorail because it's public transportation. You got to pay. You have to pay for the monorail. Get your monorail pass, like a bus pass. I don't know because I'm like, if, if, if this is the case, you would think that Subway. it's public. It's a public transportation system right. that that might be the district's responsibility to pay for it. What I do know is what it reminds me of all this ins- the self inspection on the monorail is like, have you ever been hurt at a company? And they send you to the company doctor, and the company doctor's oh, like, yeah. "Oh, your neck's broken." You know, you're, you, they don't tell you that, but your neck's broken. But you're fine to go back to work. And then you go to your doctor, and your doctor's like, "Oh, hell no, your neck's broken. I'm showing it to you." Because this happened to my father. Because uh, my dad had gotten injured at work, and he had a bad injury. And the company doctor's like, "Oh no, no, you're fine. You can go back to work." And his own doctor's like, "No, you can't." And then when they saw the X-rays, they could see that the break was there. Um, and the company doctor was trying to send him, send him back to work. And I think that happens a lot. But the company inspector may potentially overlook the fact that the foundation's crumbling. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I mean, I'm not saying that they. I'm not trying to you know question people's ethics. I'm just saying with the way Disney's been lately and some of the things they're doing, I question Disney's ethics. So. Look, the uh, used monorails wind up going to Vegas and they get refurbed. Those monorails are in nicer condition than Disney World's monorails. Disney World's monorails are terrible. They're older models. And they, like I said, they smell like pee. Yeah. And the the, the foundation, the, the support structures, the support structures from the monorail, they, they have pictures of them crumbling. It, they're, they're in dire need of complete renovation. Um, and Disney won't do it. And the thing is, all these people are cheering for Disney in this situation. What, what blows my mind is... Part of the situation, and uh, besides the DeSantis thing, outside of that, is the fact that they want to inspect the monorails because the monorails could potentially be dangerous. They've had tr- lots of trouble with them. Been on it when there was an emergency. Um, there's the issue that they want to inspect attractions in case there's something that's wrong that they wanted to double check. Then there's the issue, too, about the Reedy Creek first responders, which aren't bringing up in here, but now they're the new district's paying them, wants to give them a raise, wants to make sure they have the equipment they need. So you have been kind of put... P- potentially in danger yeah arguably in danger sometimes when you're at the parks um without your knowledge you know because they might have just let something slide they shouldn't have let slide because you know oh we want we're supposed to get two or three more years out mm-hmm. of it or don't don't renew the don't don't get them a new truck at the at the reedy creek uh first responders you know they they can just use suvs or whatever and then, then they don't get to somebody in time yeah we got to build that new meet and greet we, we right right we don't, we don't have money for that Fire trucks. You know, I'm just saying. Not paying extra yeah, for that. You're all like, you know, you're all like pissing on this. But the thing is, if you were in danger, it might have come. It, I don't know this. I'm not saying it would. I'm not. This is uh, arguably, 
possibly could have been put in danger because you didn't they didn't have what they needed to get to you. And Disney kept allegedly not paying for things and then boasting, oh, look, we have record savings this year. Yeah, because it's like, how many corners did you cut, you know, to, to get the record profits? Because that's their thing is like their executives get bonuses based on their profit margins. And it could be that like you only profited because it's like, oh, look how much money I got in the bank because I haven't been paying the electric bill for four months. You know, I haven't paid my rent for four months. So I got I got lots of money in the bank. Well, it doesn't mean you actually do. You just haven't been paying right. the bills you're supposed to be paying. So, so like this is what they're going to present tomorrow. I'm sure we're going to hear more about it in clarity because this is all like garbledy gook legally stuff. And we're going to probably have it broken down to make it easier. I, I'm sure Mickey Views will probably be there. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what he says. Sure, lawyer Joe's going to be there too. Or lawyer Joe, yeah. <laughs> but uh, like we again, we are not lawyers. Uh, we are trying to, to interpret it based on you know limited time and our not not being lawyers. So that's the way it reads to us. Of course, I'm sure legal Joe's going to say something different. That's cool. Um, he probably has more insight than we do. We're just telling you how we see it from our position. Yeah, and again, I want to reiterate, I have I have no idea how this whole thing's going to play out. I mean, it looks to me like it's just a high-profile pissing match. But how should it play out? Disney totally, I think, is out of line. Yeah, I think they are. I, I, I think they are. And this isn't even about the don't say gay or whatever. This is just Disney has been keeping the state in its back pocket for I mean, years. I years. think, yeah, I think it was a pissing match originally. And I do think Reedy Creek should have been, this whole thing should have been solved, taken care of years ago. But it went it went from a pissing match to like I'm seriously questioning D- Disney's ethics. This is from somebody who's already been questioning Disney's ethics. Prime capitalism, right here. This is like we're gonna move our enterprise in your state. You're gonna give us a bunch of perks. We're uh, gonna wheel and deal. I'm of the mind that companies shouldn't have the power that Disney's wielding. No, I, I, I'm concerned that they shouldn't have had Reedy Creek. The, the, this district as long as they did because its, its purpose was gone a long time ago. Yeah. I I am concerned when companies can uh, can do things like this to circumvent the government and the, and the, and taxpayers. I am concerned by the comments I'm seeing come out of Iger's mouth where basically we are Florida, we pay more taxes than anybody, so we should be allowed to do what we want. And then now they're going to lobbyists and trying to get lobbyists to lobby against. Yeah. Um, the Santas and Republicans and stuff like that, which now just sounds like a petty pissing match. I, I, that's what I have a problem with. Yeah, it's it, it's it's gone on too too long. I think that you know when it was very clear that Epcot was going to just be a theme park and not a city, mm-hmm. they needed to knock this. I would off. love to know how much money Disney has spent over the years to keep their status. Mm-hmm. I mean, in my opinion, I am what I believe wholeheartedly that they have greased a lot of palms to get where they are and i'm not talking about the ratatouille grease i i was gonna make a joke uh, about i'm ratatouille. talking about i mean they might have done some of that too but um i am sure there was a lot of favors and and money it's a different a different uh, uh usage of ride the rat yeah you know, has the i'm rat sure been the rat ridden? has been ridden yeah, um ridden hard. hard yes so anyway right, we're gonna we're... wrap this up like i said this is probably my place because we are not lawyers i'm just doing my best to break it down for you and I'm not very good at it, but I tried. All right. We tried. Clownfish TV, that's our <laughs> new. Clownfish TV, we tried. We tried. We tried. Are we going to wrap it up? Yeah. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.